Hi, I'm Jessica Gregory. Welcome to my EcoBuzz. Many of us have come to appreciate the sighting of a white-tailed deer, especially since in this part of Michigan, they're the largest land-dwelling animal you're likely to come across. But although their frequent presence may seem to signify a connection between human development and the natural world, too many of them could be disastrous for your local forest health. White-tailed deer populations in the eastern United States are currently four to ten times higher than they were in pre-European settlement days. This is especially obvious in urban and suburban areas where millions of residents have watched their flower and vegetable gardens or landscape plants be decimated by deer. Deer overpopulation often severely damages crops in agricultural areas, and it can even drive up your car insurance premiums. <gasps> the increase in deer populations has occurred for a variety of reasons. First, they reproduce very quickly. The deer population at the University of Michigan's George Reserve originally began with six deer. But six years later, that number had grown to 220 deer. Second, deer have higher survival rates now than in the past, up to 87% in urban areas. Lacking the large predators present in bygone days like wolves and bears or even humans, there are very few restraints on deer population growth, other than the run-in with the occasional car. In fact, the state of Michigan loses about 2-4% to of its registered hunters every year. This is unfortunate since the sale of hunting licenses actually funds wildlife conservation efforts in the state. One day, perhaps hunters will be an endangered species. Yikes! But higher deer populations cause a plethora of other problems besides eating grandma's roses. Too many deer consume large amounts of native forest understory plants, eventually altering forest composition and resulting in long-term ramifications for regrowth of new forest. Here's how. Loss of understory plant diversity means that the birds and small mammals who depend on them no longer have the shelter and food resources they need to survive, reducing their populations too. This has been recognized as a significant stressor for many migratory bird species. Fewer native species present may allow invasive species to move in. White-tailed deer further exacerbate this by their strong preference for native plants and shrubs over invasive species like garlic mustard. As a favorite host, deer contribute to the spread of Lyme disease carried by infected black-legged ticks. These ticks are known to be more prevalent where certain invasive species are present. This all comes down to the fact that managing the density of white-tailed deer populations is a must in order to promote biodiversity and improve ecosystem health. In Ottawa County, annual seasonal hunting is permitted on selected properties. Deer exclosures placed at several parks indicate that the diversity of understory plants is significantly greater where deer have been excluded, resulting in a healthier forest community. The use of hunting as a management practice in these properties is a huge component of making this a reality. Huh? Maintaining biodiversity is critical for protecting healthy ecosystems, and it depends on the delicate balance between predators and prey. In the absence of natural predators, humans play a pivotal role in the management of white-tailed deer populations. To learn more about hunting and the Ottawa County Parks, visit the link below. Happy naturing! The making of this video was sponsored by the Ottawa County Parks and Recreation Commission.